Hi my loves, welcome back to another video. If you're new to my channel, welcome, I'm Noelia, and please take a second to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss another video. For today's video, I was actually having a conversation with one of my friends and they were asking me about the top tools that I feel are super duper important when it comes to natural hair and caring for your natural hair. So with that conversation, I felt, you know what, maybe I'll put together a YouTube video to share the same thing with you guys. Now, a lot of these tools I feel are already known and it's nothing new, but I figured I'd put it all together in one video so that way if you have any questions regarding what I feel is necessary, it's all in one space. Without further ado, let's get right into this video. Okay guys, so I actually made a list of things that I feel are super duper important when it comes to caring for your natural hair. These are all just tools. Now I'm gonna make different videos for different things, but this is just particularly the curly hair tools that I feel are very essential when it comes to caring for your hair. So first I'll start off with some of the obvious ones, satin bonnets and satin scarves. Now I could not imagine life without a satin scarf or a satin bonnet. My hair would look absolutely nuts if I didn't have one or the two before going to bed. And for those of you who don't know what the point of a satin scarf or a bonnet is, so satin is less aggressive on your hair. Cotton is a common fabric that is on our pillowcases, on our bed sheets, and cotton is the type of fabric that likes to absorb moisture out of your hair. So maybe you guys may notice that when you sleep on a satin pillowcase versus sleeping on a regular pillowcase, you do tend to have less frizz. That's because satin does not absorb the moisture out of your hair. It's very gentle, it's not as abrasive on your hair, and it's actually really good for your skin. Allegedly, they claim that sleeping with satin or silk will make you less prone to wrinkles in the future. So. Same thing applies for your skin as it does for your hair. If you sleep on a cotton pillowcase or cotton sheets, cotton does absorb the moisture out of your skin as well. So you may notice that your skin might be a little drier when using cotton. I personally have been using satin pillowcases since I started my natural hair journey. So first one is satin scarves, satin bonnets, and as I just mentioned, satin pillowcases. So this is actually a gift I just got. It came with two satin pillowcases. I haven't even taken them out of the box, but honestly, this is actually one of the best gifts you can get a curly girl because you can never have too many satin pillowcases. I like to take some to travel as well. If I'm traveling and I'm gonna be at a hotel, I like to bring my own pillowcase because I play no games. I sleep with a satin scarf, a bonnet, and a satin pillowcase, so. And the next important tool is a brush. Your brushes are so, so, so important when it comes to detangling, product distribution, and just a brush that can help you slick your hair back on those days that you don't want to do your hair. So for me, as you guys know, I use my Curl Keeper Flexi Brush for everything. I get comments on just about every single video that I'm styling using this brush of people asking me what brush this is. So, for those of you who don't know, this is the Curl Keeper Flexi Brush. I have been a fan of this brush since the day that they sent it to me. I'm obsessed, like it's the best detangling brush, it's best for distributing products. I have yet to use this brush for a reason that it doesn't work for, like I love this brush so, so much. And another brush that is everything to me is my Boar Bristle brush. I could not imagine life without her. Girl, you know those days where you're just like, I can't do my hair anymore, like I need to slick it back. Having a Boar Bristle brush changes the game. I'm sure everyone has one in their stash, but these last forever too. I love, love, love these brushes. They're the best for slick ponytails, slick buns, high ponytails, everything. I even slick my edges with this because I barely have any like full-fledged edges. It's not that I don't have edges, but I don't have baby hairs is what I mean, so. So these two brushes are my absolute fave. I do have other detangling brushes that I do use, but Typically, it's this brush. I use it to style my hair, to detangle my hair, to everything. I love this brush. And this is my go-to slick my hair brush. I don't even know the brand of this brush. I got it so long ago. And it has whip it's wiped it all. Oh, it says Stanley. Stanley with nylon bristles. This brush, I'm telling you, this brush has been in my life for so, so long. And I absolutely love it. Another curly hair tool that I absolutely love is my pick. I love, 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 love my pick, especially if you're somebody who loves voluminous curls and maybe you try everything in your power to make it fluffy and it doesn't work. Fluff out your roots with a pick. Game changer. I know this is not new. This is not like I'm putting you guys onto anything. I'm sure a lot of you guys know you should use a pick to fluff out your roots for some volume, but a good pick goes a long way. So I actually got this sent to me from Pump Hair Care, I believe. 
there's only an MP left on this, so I'm assuming it's Pump Hair Care. I just love that they're that the bristles are like very separated and they're thick. So it's perfect for hair like mine because it doesn't it doesn't get stuck. It's like perfect for super thick curls. So I do tend to use it more when I use a heavier gel. So like if I use the Wetline Extreme Gel or the Eco Style Gel, you'll probably see me use a pick to fluff out my roots. Because for this wash and go, I ended up using the Curl Smith In Shower Style Fixer. So that one leaves my hair very voluminous. I don't necessarily have to pick it unless I want more volume. But if I use a heavy gel, I do have to pick up my roots so that, that way I can have more volume. Another item that I find so, so important and it's so underrated is a plastic cap. Now, I don't wanna sound like, oh my God, I'm, you're, look at you trying to put me on. I know you guys know about these basics, but like I said I did want to make one video, so if you guys have any questions about anything that I find important in a wash and go routine or just a curly hair routine in general, you guys could just refer to this video. So, I love, so I use shower caps as well as a plastic cap. It serves the same purpose as a plastic cap does to me, I feel. The point of a plastic cap is to keep your hair moisturized and have the heat from your scalp actually penetrate whatever product you have in your hair into your hair. So, I feel that a shower cap does the same thing. I have plastic caps, but I tend to not buy them as often because I'm trying to be more sustainable and I don't want to necessarily use as much plastic if I don't have to. I do use them, not often. I typically run to my shower cap. So if you guys didn't know, you guys could just use a shower cap as your plastic cap and it serves the same exact function. So maybe I'm putting you onto that one. Maybe that's a hack. And the next two items I'm going to talk about have to do with deep conditioning. You guys know I have been speaking about this item for the longest, it's my steamer. I'm obviously not gonna pick it up and put it in this video, but you guys have seen me use my steamer countless times in multiple videos. I don't know what life was like without my steamer. My hair has changed so, so much since I bought my steamer. Do you need it? No, but if you've thought about elevating your deep conditioning experience, Highly, highly, highly recommend it. These are, again, these are tools that I find essential in my routine. And ever since I've gotten my steamer, like I swear my deep conditioning routines are unmatched. So the cool thing about my steamer is that it's not only a hair steamer, it's also a facial steamer. So I kind of got a two for one. That helps me justify the price a little bit more because it is a little pricey, but it is 1000% worth the investment, especially if you have low porosity hair. All hair types could benefit from steaming, but low porosity hair, thank me later. If you guys do purchase it, check the link down below so you guys can see the exact one that I purchased. Thank me later. I've already put on, I want to say like seven people and they're obsessed. Chef kiss. And another item that I'm absolutely obsessed with when I don't steam is my Hothead by Thermal Hair Care. I love this thing. For those of you who don't know what this is, it's actually a microwavable heating cap. So it serves the same function as sitting under a hooded dryer or having a plastic cap on your head and adding a towel to it just to lock in the heat from your scalp. I was doing such a disservice to my curls when I was just being lazy and I was not adding heat to my hair. You don't have to have the latest and greatest items. You can simply just add a plastic cap to your head wrap it around in a towel and the heat from your scalp will help open up the cuticles and allow the product to work better into your hair so you don't have to go out of your way by like a very expensive hooded cap or a very expensive steamer you don't have to do all of that there's so many other methods to add heat to your hair that you know there are no excuses i'm not making excuses for none of us anymore so if you guys are looking for an option on adding heat to your deep conditioning routine i love my thermal hothead i pop it in the microwave in 45 second increments because you got to make sure that you don't add too much time to it you can risk burning the flax seeds that are inside the cap my mom actually did that to one of my caps because this is my third cap i want to say no my second cap my previous cap we left it in the microwave too long and it actually burns so you got to be careful when you add this to the microwave just make sure that you're always checking it and flipping it in and out because you want to make sure that it evenly gets heated. This is a great option to start out if you have not been adding heat to your hair during deep conditioning, this is a good option. So check them out. I will add the link down below. And last but not least is a diffuser. Now, I lived a life without a diffuser at one point. I don't know how, but I did. So at first, like when I was starting my natural hair journey is when people were dropping like the collapsible ones and the pieces, like this has always been an item that came with blow dryers. We just didn't really ever use it for what it was for. 
So, my first one was a Curly Co collapsible one. Those are perfect, they're universal, they work on just about every blow dryer. But my absolute favorite diffuser at the moment is my Dyson Supersonic Hair Blow Dryer. I know she's a little bit pricey, she's a little pricey, but this is probably the best blow dryer that I've ever used to date to dry my curls. Now, you guys know I have a lot of hair, very dense, thick hair, and when it's wet and I apply very thick products to it, it takes years to dry. So I finally found a blow dryer that dries my hair with, you know, it, it's not like, I wouldn't say it dries my hair in 10 minutes, but I can dry my hair in like 25 minutes. And for me, that is a selling point in itself because those of you with thick curly hair, you guys know how annoying it is to sit under a dryer and just all day, like your neck starts to hurt, your arm hurts, I just, I just. So I love me my Dyson Supersonic Blow Dryer. She is the best. I love the diffuser attachment. It's literally a magnet, it is the coolest thing. And I was kind of hesitant when it came to purchasing this because of course it is on the pricier side. But the amount of time that this has saved me is worth every penny. So yeah guys, those are the tools that I find important to have in a curly hair routine. This is what makes sense for me. Now, take it as you want, you know what I mean? I don't think that everything that I mentioned in this video is completely necessary. I would say take this and customize it towards yourself. Like if you already own one thing, you don't need to have three of the same thing or have two of this or have enough, you know? Honestly, just do what works for you. I'm gonna go ahead and add the links to all the items I mentioned in this video down below. If you have any questions regarding anything I mentioned in this video, feel free to comment it down below, but also check the description box because I'm gonna add everything in there as well. Go ahead and comment down below some items that you feel are very important to have in your curly hair routine. I'm curious to see what you guys have in your collection and compare and see what's good. But yeah, guys, that is all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.